Good morning, everyone. We're learning uh, the Maimar Ache Avaya, continuing with this Maimar. Um, today we'll discuss the last Ois of the Maimar, which is Ois Vav. And uh, we last uh, spoke about the Isbunus contemplation that leads to contemplation in Daphne. And uh, we mentioned that the revelation of, ultimately the revelation of Havaya, the way it is, higher than the world, right? We have the Shem Havaya, the Yud Kei Vavke, the way it is uh, in the world, and the way it is uh, uh, higher than the world. And the, the, the Rebbe over here quotes the Gemara in Masech Tebrochis, Yud Gimel, about the the Gemara says it uses the terminology "am lichte lemailo," which is a uh, crowning Hashem above, down here lemato, and f- the four corners. Which this is the kavana of uh, the Shema of Echod. Aluf Shleilam is Aleph. The Zion is seven. It's really Ches. We have Ches, Zion, Rakim, and the heavens, the seven firmaments and the heavens and the four corners of the world. That's the uh, what the Gemara speaks about. But uh, even uh, the the Rebbe says the Maimur is telling us that even though when you say "am crowning Hashem is meaning that you are referencing to the physical reality. There is a world. There is seven heaven. There's seven heavens, and there's the firmament. There's the firmaments and the uh, seven firmaments and the heaven. But this is something that is above it, which is the revelation of Avaya that is above the world. And that's the concept of that there is no other reality besides Hashem, the, written in Pashas uh, Vaischanon, Ein Oid Milvadei, that there is no other Metzius, there is no other existence beside the godly existent, beside Hashem, which is the only true reality. And that was their discussion previously about the different levels of truth. Uh, the Svas Emes Tikon Load, Emes, Titan Emes Liapriv, and Emes Lamito, the highest level of truth. So Ein Oid Melvado is referencing to the highest level of truth. We'll look at Vav. Uvze Yuvan Mashakosu Besifri, Peush, Uvoisid Bokun. So this is speaking about our Pasuk, Ach Avali Kechum Telechu. In uh, which is a pasuk in this week, Pasha, in, pa- in Pasha's Re'i. So we had we asked the question at the beginning of the Maimur, what is voiced Bokun? What does it mean t- to cleave to Hashem? So the Sifri interpreted voiced Bokun that uh, separate yourself from idolatry. For him, the meaning of voiced Bokun, what does it mean? How do you cleave to Hashem by separating yourself from idolatry? So we asked the question, why would you? Why would you put this commandment at the end? It should be the very beginning. Reishis Aveda is be the the first step. It should be separate yourself from idolatry. Then you can follow Hashem's commandment and and do other things. But this is the uh, the foundation. So. Separate yourself from idolatry and connect to God. So now we see a different definition of what is Avedazo. What is the what is Avedazo? It says anything that is not nullified, not just nullified, the Maima says but Tahli meaning the ultimate nullification. To Hashem Meaning there is Avedozal, there is some kind of, um, there is a trace of idolatry in a place where there is no bitul to godliness. Anything that is not completely nullified to godliness, there is a dying Inyan Shlavedozal, there is something, there is a trace of Avedozal in there. Still Avedozal, and that, this is the meaning of the verse. 
follow Hashem your God, walk in His ways, and then the pasuk ends off. The pasuk concludes with voice it bakun, and you should cleave to Him. And the Sifri tells us, separate yourself from idolatry and connect to God. After the avoid the meaning that you serve Hashem, you follow the steps, follow the Hashem's ways, went uh, did uh, doing his commandments, learning his Torah, and so on. The completion of meaning the the final blow, the final touch. The completion of the job, so to speak, the way you become complete in Hashem's service. You have to separate yourself from Aved What does it mean, separate yourself from Aved Zohar? In a very, in 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 a very fine way. Shasimon al uveisid bakun. The sign uveisid bakun aprishus me'aved zor is to separate yourself from aved zor. In Elias betachli sabitu to be in the ultimate nullification. Shiurga shainya dein noid milvade that it should be noticeable that there is nothing but Hashem. Vehergish then this type of feeling, this type of realization. Tzorud b'efen shariyah needs to be in a way that you see it. That what does it mean? You see it. That you have clarity. As it says in the in the beginning of the parsha, you should see anoichi. Since the way we serve Hashem is mela matel amaylo, we serve Hashem with steps. We start with the lowest level and we progress. God willing, as the Torah describes the steps in prayer, Sulam Mutzav so that there is a ladder below, and you climb the ladder, you go up. When it comes to Pashas Ekev, we're dealing with Shmia, with hearing. When we get to Pashas Re'e, we're dealing with Re'iyah, with a higher level. As we mentioned before, the ain't a day mishmeleria that hearing and and seeing is two different levels. Shmia has a certain level of clarity, but seeing, hearing is one level of clarity, but seeing is a much higher level of clarity. Vashlemus beze, and the completion. Tiel osid lovi will be in the time of Mashiach. Shazi agilu yivchin asriya. At that time, revelation would be, revelation of godliness in the world will be in a way of, of seeing, of Iyah. They'll be able to see godliness. They'll have clarity. Giving, putting in front of you, bracha, blessing, and a curse. Comes to Hanechi, the essence of Alikus, that is above Ishtashilus, above any kind of order, a gradual order. This is beautiful. So we see, when it comes to, if you notice that this week Pasha speaks about the level of Hanechi. We're not saying the A Hashem. It says Rea Nechi. What does Anechi represent? Represent the levels that are Babish Tashilus. What's so important for these levels? How do they relate to us? He says in these levels, Hashem can take the Klala, takes a curse, he takes darkness and transforms it into light. He takes the Klala and transforms it into Bacha. That will be in the time of Mashiach cause of the revelation of the unity of Hashem meaning it will be revealed in the world the unity of Hashem that is above any kind of definitions it will be in a state of seeing 
Moshe Kosov in the prophecy of Yeshaya, in regards to the revelation of godliness in the time of Mashiach, it says, Hashem's honor will be revealed, and all flesh will be able to see in an aliyah, in a kuyam, and at that time, the fulfillment of the prophecy in Tzephania, that all the nations of the world will transform, will turn around. That's what I mean. There will be a transformation to be Hashem. They, they serve Hashem. Shechem Echod, meaning together, together with us. So this is similar to the transformation of turning a klala into bracha, turning darkness, turning a curse into a blessing. Similarly with the with idolaters, there'll be a transformation in their in, in them as well, that they would serve Hashem, Shem Echod. But how is it going to happen? It's to happen through the revelation of Anaychi. So now we can understand why the the pasuk ends off a voice So the, the, the what the rabbi is really saying, you had the a very interesting interpretation of the sifri because. The Sifri, instead of, uh, I would say, siding with the simple meaning of the verse, he tells us something that's completely, sounds completely out of the park. Because the, the, the word says, the voice is bok, when you should cleave Tashem. Right? That's what tit boik means. Like they have a glue. You should connect Tashem. Ah, Apostle goes on and on with all the commandments and so voice it boku. Comes the Sifri and says, No, no, no. Voice it boku means you should separate yourself from Avaid So okay. If that's so, well, it should have been written in the beginning. That's the number one thing that you should do. No, no, meaning in this Pasuk there's like five commandments. Right? Yeah. The, the list goes on like this. It says, it's a pasuk in chapter 13, verse 5. So the, it says, It says, You should fear God. You should fear God. Chapter 13, verse 5. Meaning, you should fear Hashem. You should do guard His commandment. You should heed to his voice. And you should serve him. And then the Pasuk ends off after all these steps, asking us to do all these steps. The Pasuk tells you, and then you cleave to Hashem. So you have five commandments over here in one Pasuk. I, I give you a, give you a, a basic direct, directive, right? follow Hashem. And then what does the Pasuk say? You should fear Hashem, mitzvah of Tishmoy, you should guard the mitzvahs, bekoilo Tishmo, heed his voice, voice of Savoidu, and then, u voice it boku. At the end of it, you should cleave to Hashem. You didn't see it? Yeah, I see it, but, um, okay, but Rashi, I'm looking at Rashi, he says to adhere to his ways, to cleave to his ways, to do kindly actions, bury the dead, visit the sick, and as did the Hakash Baruch. Right, so comes the Sifri, and it comes up with a whole different interpretation to the word of Voice Right, that's the last word. So, so instead, Hasidus doesn't tell us this Pirush, this interpretation, that the Voice Bokum means to stay away from Oved Adol. Hasidus doesn't tell you this is an off Pirush. It says it has to be something deeper into it. What's deep into this inter- interpretation? Yeah. So he says... The complete way of serving Hashem is being completely nullified to Him. If you're not completely nullified to Hashem, there's a trace of Avedah Zohar there. So, okay, uh, my, my personal, when I look at this, I think that if you do the first four things, then you can adhere to His ways. Right. 
And then we, he tells you, that's what the, the point of the mind, he tells you when you do all the five steps, then you can reach to the level of separating yourself completely from idolatry. Uh -huh. because, because idolatry is not necessarily just bowing to, uh, to an uh, idol, God whatever, forbid. Yeah. He's saying that there is a trace of idolatry, there's still some sort of avoid as well, the place of a, a place where there is ego, a place where there is there's no bitul. A place of bit a, a place of bitul, complete bitul, tachlis of bitul. He writes complete nullification. That's the that's the final blow. That's the final step that needs to be done in serving Hashem. Meaning you can do all the beautiful things in the world. You can do the mitzvahs. You can learn Torah. But if there is a trace of of I in it, there's still a Vaidozawa there. So comes the Sifri tells you, do you want to do you want to really connect to Hashem? You really want to tap to Tavaye, to, to Anechi, you want to tap into these levels? You have to you have to be in a state of Bitu. You have to do Uvaisid Baku and you have to get rid of any traces of Avidazar. And you can't do it unless you went through all the steps. Meaning you can't get rid of the course of the of this of the fine thin layer of foreskin until you got rid of the coarse foreskin, right? Right. So it really the reason why Uvoice Balkan comes at the end, that's really the answer of the, the Mimer to the question that started in the beginning of the Mimer, is that you can only get there after you went through all the steps and then you have to make sure that everything you're doing or everything that is being done is, is done in a state of bitul. Why am I doing it? Because there's no other existence but Hashem. There's no other reality but Hashem. But it takes away that, it takes work. Otherwise, you would say, well, Uvoisid Boku needs to be in the beginning, because how can I serve Hashem if I'm, I'm still connected, God forbid, to, to Avay the Zohar? Yeah. Right now, Jesus says, no. He, a Jew is obviously not connected with the Zohar, but there is a trace of it. If there is I, there is a trace of it. And that's really why it comes at the end. But that's, the, that's, the, that's the polishing, so to speak. The, 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 if, you, if you like a carpenter that polishes it a hundred times and then he puts a shellac and he puts this and, and then a final touch and not to make it really shiny and beautiful, to make your actions beautiful and our Torah and our way of life is to get to, to ultimately get to a state of bitter. That's what the uh, from my understanding that's what the Mimer's message is.